Remember, when reading the Acts of the Apostles, ask yourself the question, what are the apostles doing and how is it described? And how is it very similar to the ministry of Jesus Christ? Because again, all this book is, is that the person and the ministry of Jesus Christ continues on through the Acts of the Apostles. So in today, in our first reading, just after the previous verses before and probably yesterday's first reading, the apostles are doing miraculous things and healings, just like Jesus. Even more so, even in a way, I don't want to say better than Jesus, but maybe even more miraculous because it even describes how the people just want to stand in the shadow of St. Peter and be healed by him. And that didn't happen in Jesus. You know, it reminds me of the text that Jesus says in, in the Gospels that, you know, that those who believe in him will not only do the works that Jesus does, but will even do even greater works than that of the person of Jesus Christ. And we see that being played out um, uh, in yesterday's first reading. Today, we are brought about by the Sadducees. That's how it begins. The Sadducees, they were the priestly class of the rulers of the Jewish people. They didn't believe in angels and they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Okay, so that's going to be key here. And Luke, Luke is going out of his way to tell us that it's the Sadducees that are upset with all this. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And just like in the Gospels, these leaders are jealous. They were jealous of Jesus, and now they're jealous of the apostles. So they lay hands on him, just like they did with Jesus, and they put him in jail. But during the night, what do we see happen? An angel, okay? This is kind of Luke's irony here. An angel comes in, opens the doors, lets him out, and then says this. Take your place in the temple area and tell everything about this life. That's an unusual phrase, this life. It's usually not described that way. It's described as the gospel, it's described as the way, but you don't hear much about this life. And I would think it's, it's a play on what? The resurrection of the dead. That their life, the life that they're living now is radically transformed because of their witness to the resurrection of of Jesus Christ, because of the Holy Spirit that they received, and also because of their belief now in their own resurrection from the dead, which makes them, even though they're told by these leaders who have power and who have the authority to put them in jail and the authority maybe, maybe not directly, but at least influence to put them to death, and they don't seem to care. They're being commissioned by God Go back into the temple, into the place of worship and the place of sacrifice. Go back right into there. Make your lives an offering to God and tell them how the resurrection of the dead has radically transformed your life. Tell them about it. And so now the story gets comical because the Sanhedrin meets the next morning and they're like, okay, go get these knuckleheads, you know, go get these guys and bring them in. And the guard comes and the <laughs> guard reports back, you know, geez, they're, they're gone. <laughs> in fact, now the people that you put into jail are now back in the temple preaching what you exactly told them not to preach. And now we see what? We see power and authority change hands. The Sadducees, who thought they had a lot of authority, realize they don't have as much authority and power as they thought they did. They put him in jail, and it didn't seem to work. And in fact, we see their power and authority lessen even more, as now they tell the guards, look, go get them, but don't arrest them, don't make a scene, because now they're afraid of them being stoned to death, because many people now are being attracted and are falling in love with this great message that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And so let the resurrection of Jesus also transform our lives too. You know, it has to. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the central tenets of the Christian faith, and it's quite remarkable. You know, because we all, we all grieve, and we're all 
always afraid of, of dying and we're afraid of losing those that we love. And the central component of the gospel message is that, is that their life is not truly over yet. It's not for Jesus, it's not for the apostles, it's not for your loved ones, and it's not for us as well. This is the life that we need to preach. May God bless you.